interview Jim Bob and Michelle, two of their daughters sat down with us. The Megyn Kelly thing, I don't really like to even talk about it. Welcome down the rabbit hole, my lovely friends. Thank you for all your comments on my episodes prior to this one. I'm going to make a video that features some of what you had to say because I found it so interesting. You guys bring up the best points and it helps me to think about things from a different perspective. So please continue to leave your comments. Today we're going to be diving into the Duggar docuseries, Shiny Happy People. This is episode three. If I hadn't felt obligated to like, one, do it for like the sake of the show, and two, do it for like the sake of my parents, I wouldn't have done it. Tomorrow, I'll be putting out a quick, down and dirty, quick recap of episode four with my overall feelings and commentary about the series. And after that, I'm going to be putting out a really interesting video about about what's been going on outside of the documentary because there's a lot of crazy shenanigans. Breaks my heart to think about the girls and how they've been treated. Story of Jill Duggar's life. She's getting put into an awkward and uncomfortable situation and I feel so bad for this girl. She better put out her book soon because it's time for her voice to be heard in the way she wants it to be heard. Nobody asking her questions she doesn't want to answer. Um, let her speak for herself. And I think this documentary does a good job of that. You just can see how Jill is sharing, like, I'm uncomfortable with talking about a lot of these things. I don't want to look back on all of it. I don't want to create even worse relationships with my family. Like, she's letting us know, like, I don't like this. I'm sad that this has been put on me in my life. It's not what I want. It's not what I wanted. For my family, with filming commitments, we knew there were expectations. So flat out, we are hearing from Jill, like this is not what she wanted of her life. Now, maybe she did quote unquote volunteer to help out when everything went down with Josh, but it was, it was under a lot of pressure. And in general, we're finding that her whole entire life, this whole entire show, what went on with Jim Bob, it was like a pressure cooker. It's like she and the other girls are living in a pressure cooker of needing to be perfect for God, for the IBLP, for the show. And they're doing everything they can to live up to those standards and that's part of what happened when they started stepping forward to try to protect Josh because it was like they were forced to think of it as we're all in this together we better have each other's back or else the world is going to destroy us and I see that coming straight out of the mouth of Jim Bob some people have been saying that we don't learn anything new or we don't learn much new from this documentary and I totally disagree. Maybe this is just me, but I love that the documentary shows us straight from the horse's mouth, straight from Jill's mouth, the expectations that were put on her by filming. The way that she felt uncomfortable with how TLC, her dad and her family was requiring her to participate in this show in ways that didn't work for her family. That's something I want to know about. There was definitely like an awareness that they assumed that they were going to yes. be able to continue filming with us and it wasn't going to stop right after. Let me remind you, TLC and Jim Bob are treating his kids like this is their job. And guess what? It's not a job because they're not getting paid for it. They are not getting paid to do any of this. They're showing up for filming. They're spending long days on the set. Their whole lives have been this way. They're having to put off engagements with other people. Jill's husband, Derek, can't do what he wants to do with his life to go and film <laughs> these episodes. That's wrong. And most of us would be like, we were taken advantage of if we were put into this kind of situation. Yes, we were taken advantage of. And here we can see they're showing us some clips of how staged the whole thing was. And we hear Amy say, and we also hear Jill, and we also hear Jill say some of it, that, I mean, it was staged. I mean, it, yes, it was like some reality, but it's like you go there, you have to refilm things. You have to get back into the same clothing. You have to put makeup on. You've got these kids running around that you've got to wrangle up. I'm sure it was overwhelming. I mean, can you imagine being an introvert? Really, it's not that invasive, and our children have gotten to the point where they just kind of ignore the cameras. And we. In this family, just being an introvert, not having all the other stuff going on, the anxiety from what's happened in the past with Josh, being A B U S E D. I mean, 
despite all of that, just being an introverted person who's like, I need time to myself to like recharge and find my own energy. And day after day, you're having to film for weeks at a time. And then once the filming crew is gone, you're still surrounded by 18 other people in the house at all times. I mean, this is um, this could be a difficult lifestyle for many of us. Because whatever we do ought to be done for the Lord. Growing up in that world, you have to obey. Obey, right. obey, <laughs> obey. It's we learned from the other participants in the documentary that the IBLP was all about authority, obeying, and servanthood. And that's what their lives as children were all about. They didn't have any, seemingly they didn't have control over what was happening to them. And they were made to serve, serve their parents, serve each other, serve other family members. That's what they were taught. Teaching of IBLP is servanthood. We're, you're taught to serve. And this is kind of shocking for me. The other participants in the documentary are letting us know that in general, outside of the Duggar family, there were lots of random contracts that were created within a family, like a contract between a father and a son or a father and a daughter that you're going to do certain things, act a certain way, participate in certain behaviors. So when contracts were brought to the Duggars and to the Duggar kids, it was no question that they were going to sign whatever was put in front of them or agree to whatever was put in front of them. This was even part of their teachings in their own church. The idea of signing a contract to agree to a specific set of rules or behaviors was very common. They were not of a mindset to be able to really... Um, Think about what was being asked of them in a contract and knowingly agree to it. Duggar family speaking out since being rocked by a series of scandals. Several family members are speaking out in TLC's new show, Jill and Jessa Counting On. Everybody makes... And the beat goes on. La -da 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 -da. Do you remember that song? Like, it's so... When I think about it, <laughs> like, that melody, it's sad. It kind of, like relates to what's going on for Jill and the other girls there. It's like, gosh, step in place. We got to get back on the set. It's time to get that show off and rolling. We're going to call it counting on. You girls better start getting pregnant and popping out babies. It's time to count on. Chop, 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 chop. The beat goes on. It's their own decisions and everybody makes their own choices, but they're not the only ones that suffer the consequence. And the next part of this episode can just be called the Duggar girls got screwed. Got screwed over multiple times. Um, we see Jill crying, like just being very authentic and being like, this is really hard. I don't want all this shit thrown in my face all the time. Work through that, you already dealt with it and you've already moved on and you don't want that like rubbed in your face all the time. Anymore. And at some point you're like, I feel you, Jill, and you're not alone, but you got <laughs> royally screwed over more than a lot of people in similar situations. I like how the documentary it talks about how, because this is so true, that this show really tried to be like, oh gosh, oh gosh, <laughs> Jim Bob and Michelle, Jim Bob just a lovable, crazy, silly, silly dad, silly, crazy old dad. He doesn't look too friendly. The show really tries hard to portray Jim Bob as kind of a lovable lug. Um, and they're like, you know, they really portrayed him in a certain way. They portrayed everyone in a certain, like, kind of silly, make fun of it sort of way. And it's not something to make fun of. <laughs> Let's look at what's happening here. This is crazy. We're from the same area in Northwest Arkansas, but growing up, never met each other. And I was about to go to Nepal and had actually contacted uh, Jim Bob about being a prayer partner of mine. They talk a little bit about how the show does let us know. I mean, it pretty much puts in our face that Jim Bob was sort of handpicking the men who were going to date and marry his daughters. We know that they had to fill out like a whole application. There was an assessment process and they're sort of equating it to um, like a betrothal type situation. I don't care what anyone says. I really like Derek. Um, we can get down and dirty into like where he comes from, his relationship with Jill. He was not part of the IBLP. He is conservative, but he's had a lot more like freedom and room to grow than Jill has, in my opinion. And he kind of like took her along with him once they got married. And I truly believe that they fell for each other. They weren't just chosen for one another. It was a good fit. They've been good for each other in so many ways. And whether or not you believe with Every, you believe that everything they say 
is um, something you want to do in your life. You know, I, I can disagree with things that they say and still have a lot of respect for them. And that's how I feel. And I'm happy that Jill wound up with Derek. With you, um, I'm interested in starting an official courtship, so. Um, <laughs> so. Yeah, that would be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then we're going to get into the fact that contracts were brought into the mix. Jim Bob brought them to the girls to sign. And Jill basically says, like, I signed a contract on the day of my wedding. I barely looked at it. I didn't see what it said. No one talked to me about it. I just put my John Hancock on there. The day before we got married, I signed a contract. I just saw the signature page. So, I mean, clearly her parents were not looking out for her personal best interest. If they were, they would have at least sat down with her. They would have had like a neutral party come in and talk to her about what she was signing and say like, okay, like you're an adult now. I guess, I guess they're signing the contract because she's married. Like you're an adult now. These are the contracts that we're doing with TLC. You need to decide like if you're okay with this contract, but they didn't do any of that ish. No, they just... They needed her to sign that shit, so they put it in front of her and she signed it. We were literally running through the kitchen and it was like whoever you could grab on the way through. Like, I didn't know what it was for. So the way that Jill describes it almost makes you feel like it was set up that way by whoever, probably Jim Bob. Like, oh, 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 quickly, before you guys run off to your honeymoon, I know you're in a huge rush and it could be like life or death if you leave now because you got to make whatever like plane or flight you're going. Uh, quickly, just sign this real fast, real fast. We need to get it done. We need to get it done. You know, I mean, clearly no thought or concern for um, whether or not his daughter really wanted to be a part of this. It was that it was a commitment of your life for the next five years to the show. They had their negotiations. They had their business meetings. It just wasn't with us. And then later, Jill and Derek, they find out that the contract really is going to hold them hostage for the next five years of their life. And there's no, like negotiating it to change it. Jim Bob had already negotiated it the way that he wanted, and that was it. They're stuck with the situation that they were put in. So a few weeks out from the birth, the production company, they're like, hey, so we're thinking about the birth. Are you good with us like being just like one person there, like early labor? So now Jill and Derek are in a situation where they're being told like, you need to come here at this time to do this filming, wear this, act this way. Um, are you getting pregnant? Perfect. Then keep that to the side because we're going to need to come up with a way to film that. We're going to have to do a pregnancy announcement. Then we're going to have to film you giving birth. Um, what kind of angles can we get on your vagina? You know, I mean, they were just like sold. They were sold to this company and they're like, and I cannot emphasize enough. They were not getting money. <laughs> they were not. Um, there were times that Jim Bob was allowing them to live in homes that he owned. Um, I think for free, but who knows? Um, but you know, it's like, they don't get to choose the home. They don't get to choose where they, where the home is. I mean, they're, they're being controlled by Jim Bob and TLC and they're not getting paid for it. This is not a um, revenue stream for them and that's not right that's not fair i knew for sure i was like nobody's in my delivery room like nobody and nobody's there for the labor watching me like i don't want any of that so then jill she's basically on the documentary saying like i didn't want anyone in the delivery room i didn't want people filming me actually giving birth or seeing like the baby come out or the baby directly after it's born because she knew what had happened with anna um they have footage of anna like giving birth on a toilet and you can see a lot of what's going on it's all you know um pixelated of course but you see the baby with the afterbirth on it and i mean like jess is just like the and, and I mean, Jill is just like, that's not what I want for myself, but she's getting pressure. She's being told like, well, when can we come? What can we film? What can we do? And they're just kind of pushing it. We did diary cams. Oh we yeah, did, on the tripod. Yeah. We did a lot of work. So then because they were getting so much pushback, they were like, okay, they started filming things themselves. They did like a diary cam so that they could give this um, footage to the production company. But let's be honest about all of this. This is where we need to break it down. The reason that that show was so successful, the money makers for the show were weddings and births. So they were gonna make a crap load of money off of Jill's footage of her giving birth. Okay. The Duggar women are doing the labor, literally doing the labor 
but they're really being shut out of who has the money and who has the power. My buddies, my sister witches who have been with me for a long time, do you remember the video I made about Christine Brown from Sister Wives? That song that I used that was like, you make me do too much labor all day, every day, therapist, mother, maiden, and then a virgin. You know, that song fits this situation perfectly. Jim Bob and Josh Duggar, the lives that they have led, what they're able to do buy all these airplanes and go zooming around <laughs> the United States, um, obtain so much real estate and, and buy, sell, trade, create businesses. It's all built on the backs of the money they made off of women like Anna, Jill, Jessa, Joanna, getting married and giving birth on their show because that's where the money came from. And those girls, they go off and get married to a guy that isn't a son of Jim Bob's and they do not reap the same benefits as Jim Bob's sons. Now they may get some benefits from it. I'm, you know, I don't know specifically everything that everyone gets, but I know that Jill and Derek up until the point where they found out on their own <laughs> that Jim Bob was lying to them, weren't getting anything. Getting, they were getting diddly squat. I think some of that has changed because it's come out through Derek and Jill kind of digging and being willing to go outside the family and figure out what was going on. You know, they bravely were like, hey, we're not just going to like sit down and take what's happening here. We want to know what's up. Derek was smart enough to say something seems off. Um, but until then, nobody was getting anything. It was just Jim Bob doling out the money as he saw fit, and it went to his sons. What our out-of-pocket costs were for health insurance for Israel's birth. They said they paid the family. Paid the family means we don't get anything at that point. I said, well, we paid your dad, so. This is where it really makes me mad when people call Derek and Jill grifters. Like, how can you call this grifting? Like, what happened was that they were living their own lives, paying their own way in the world. They gave birth to their first son, Israel. It cost more than they expected. They weren't expecting to have to go into the hospital. And so they went to TLC and said, like, you got all this footage of us. You're making money off of it. Can you pay our hospital bills? That's all they wanted. They weren't even, they were going to go out and buy like a jacuzzi tub with it. They wanted the, to settle their debt with the hospital. Hospital. And all of a sudden TLC is like, we paid your family. And they're like, what? You know, they're under the assumption that the money, there was no money. This was a ministry. So then they go back, they go back to Jim Bob, they go back to TLC. And this is where the issue becomes um, a big deal between TLC, Derek and Jill, and they have to leave the show. And there's a huge fallout with Jim Bob and like it, rightfully so. In my opinion, 100% rightfully so. They were not asking for too much. What they were asking for was like the minimum. How dare people call them grifters? Like they're asking for the minimum for what they are doing. They were raised, Jill was raised to do this. She's been doing it forever. Like just, I can't. Oh, take a deep breath. You make me do too much labor. Okay. So, um, you know, I just, I think that they needed to get paid for that. <laughs> <laughs> they need they need a payday Cha -ching! like they need a payday that's why i said i'm gonna buy like a bunch of their books and send it to a few people who watch my channel um that's my opinion so that's what a lot of this part of the documentary is about how do you guys think about this i so many people are like they're grifting i don't like Derek. i'm just so surprised by that Meanwhile, just so that you know, um, the contract was that Jim Bob would make $850,000 a year for filming. Would you like to have that money? I would, for sure. That's a lot of money. Jill states, as a fact, she never received any payout. No cash, no check, no nothing. To several years, if you were working in the training centers. At the training centers, it's usually kids in their late teens, early 20s who would be going to college, but have basically been. Okay, then they sort of show how the IBLP like looks a little bit like Scientology because um, they have all these people working at the headquarters for Bill Gothard for essentially free living in like a camp-like environment. Instead of going to college, they go to live at headquarters and they provide labor and they serve. They serve, remember? They're the mercies. <laughs> 
and Bill Gothard is the prophet, right? Because some people are mercies and some people are prophets, but only like Bill Gothard and Josh Duggar are prophets. So everybody else has to be a mercy and serve them. So that's what's going on at headquarters. And it really sucks. <laughs> that's what the documentary lets us know. We will continue to guide and control all that he has planned for our future. I don't think our parents realized how intense it was. Now, one thing for me, they talk a lot about like all the different programs in the IBLP. One thing for me is like, I just get so much like secondhand embarrassment when I see the guys in the IBLP, like fake military uniforms being like, <laughs> just like so proud of themselves. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I, I feel bad and I feel embarrassed. <laughs> Um, I'm just like, this is not, uh, it's just not it. It's not it for me. Um, they're creating like their own brand of like uh, military guidance for these kids. But it's just like, unfortunately, like what we see with Josh and what I've seen with some of the other brothers on in the Duggar family and many other people from the IBLP is like this arrogance and egotism that it creates in them. Like not really always feeling like they don't have to follow the rules or the laws. They're like an island unto themselves. They follow God's law. And I sort of feel like that's what they're being trained to do in this IBLP military is like, you're in charge. We're in charge at the IBLP. Don't worry about what the government says. Don't worry. You know, um, we've seen that a lot with like the boys just like <laughs> getting pilot's licenses and flying all over the United States and like crashing their airplanes and then going down, um, um, to like Haiti to, to participate to participate in supposedly like giving food and water to people who really need it which I think is a great thing but then what we hear about what they actually did while they were down there is that they were not helpful maybe they thought they were maybe they were trying I don't even know if it was like purposely unhelpful but they were not helpful they don't know what they're doing they're not actually helping anyone so um, there's just a lot of like arrogance that runs through the programming that they're doing with these boys at the center. At the Oklahoma City Training Center, they sealed the windows shut so that we couldn't go out on the ledge and attempt to commit suicide. The IBLP Center um, just does so many crazy things. Like they really control how people dress. Uh, people in the documentary are getting in trouble for wearing like a slight heel to their shoe. Um, they drill them constantly about uh, the different like principles that they're supposed to have memorized. It really reminds me so much of what I've read about Scientology. Very interesting. Um, there's a heightened control there and the kids are just being constantly Okay, so the people in the documentary, it's awful. They literally, I just can't even imagine. They literally say that people who are working at the IBLP headquarters and the different centers, like there's several situations where people threaten to take their own lives because they're so like disappointed in themselves or they can't live up to the expectations of the center. I can only imagine if like you had lustful feelings or maybe you um, were covering up that you were homosexual or something like that, that it would be just absolute torture to be there and feel like you could never live up to what everybody else was doing. So it's awful um, to hear all of this. And this, this is new information to me, although I could imagine that that would be part of what was being instilled at the pe to the people at the center. I can't even imagine to, it is shocking to hear that there were actually young people, children who are college age, who are feeling so much intense anxiety about what they're being taught that they hate themselves so much that they don't want to be here anymore. I found out that the entire Gothard family was living incredibly extravagantly off of the Institute's money. The next part is not a shock to me because we find out that Bill Gothard and his entire family, uh, it's all nepotism because everything that they're doing with their lives, their homes, how they live, everything is getting paid for by the Institute. So all the money that's rolling in there from parents who send their kids to live there, from people who are buying their wisdom booklets, who are using all their training seminars, all that money is going towards Gothard being very wealthy, very rich, being able to do whatever the heck he wants, sue people left and right, and live whatever lifestyle he wants and he is filtering it on down to the people that he cares about in his family. IBLP's biggest donor is David Green, who is the CEO of Hobby Lobby. Obviously in our culture, you've seen a lot of... 
then we learn about this is this is really sad for me because in college I used to love Hobby Lobby. You know, I didn't have any money, and there were times that I needed to go and get things for my job. I was working through college or whatever. Maybe I needed something for school, and I would go over to Hobby Lobby. It turns out that Hobby Lobby is full of a bunch of assholes. They're doing like awful hobbies, which mainly involve giving all of our money that we give to them to the IBLP and supporting Bill Gothard, I guess. Um, we learned that it's not a good place. Hobby Lobby. I don't even know if there's any more of those out there. I do have to say if I found one, I would still go there and do some shopping. It's nostalgic for me. It's cheap. I'm sorry. Sorry, guys. I mean, Jill, if you don't want me to, like, message me and let me know, and I'll stop for you, girl. Program in 28 of their facilities. This year, they're going to put it in 12 more. This is why I came to prison. <laughs> this is why I came to prison. <laughs> Did you know that the IBLP is heavily invested in getting involved in prisons? Yeah, I knew that <laughs> because we've gone over that like video after video and all of my talks about Josh Sugar and Anna's family and how invested they are in their prison ministry. And that comes up in this documentary as well. They do a great job of getting a ton of clips of people talking about the IBLP's involvement in the prison system and the fact that the prison is paying for some of this involvement. ATI was not just an academic curriculum, world domination was the goal. <laughs> okay, so the next part of the documentary is just talking about how they really feel like world domination was the goal, you know, that they were trying to spread this ideology and this indoctrination throughout the world. So you even see like the Duggars, um, they're using Derek to do these mission trips. I mean, that was what Derek was doing anyway. But they're kind of like, we can use this as a way to spread and proselytize, you know, how we believe things should be done. And it's interesting that this is what eventually led to Jill having the big falling out with her family because she and Derek, they're like, we're doing our missionary thing. And the TLC pro production company is like, that's not okay. You signed a contract with us and we need you here for filming. We need this and that. And when Jill steps up and says, no, I can't do that. They're like, you signed a contract, you must do it. Do what you're asking us to do. And it was one of those like aha moments for us that basically they're like, well, you have to. So when this all goes down, um, Jill's dad, Jim Bob is like, hey, let me just uh, send you over the page that you signed on the contract that says that you're gonna do it. And he's like, you signed it, Jill, you signed it. And essentially what Derek and Jill say is like, they weren't aware what Jill signed. They just weren't aware of it. They didn't know. And now they're being held to a standard that they just can't meet. They can't do it. They, they feel like they didn't give their word. They never meant to give their word. Derek is like, you know, we just, we couldn't do it. This was wrong. This was fraud. And that's what he's claiming. My dad sends us the signature page along with like just the obligation section of the contract. Oh, then guess what happens? This, I am so angry. This episode is all about how angry I am for Jill Duggar. Like, so now that Jarek and Jill are like, hey, what's going on here? Something odd is happening. This doesn't seem fair. We want to talk to TLC. Well, first off, Chad Gallagher steps in there. He's like a representative. He works in politics, but he's just like, hey, I'm working for your dad. I helped him get this contract, so I'm going to have to come with you. And Jill and Derek are like, what's going on here? Anyway, long story short, Jim Bob's finally like, hey, guys, guess what? <laughs> just something funny I just thought of. Um, I might start paying some of the kids. Jill, Derek, I think I'm going to start paying some of the older kids. Just thinking about it now <laughs> since you brought it up. And we kind of talked about how, yeah, I was making some money. I just thought to myself, I'm going to start paying some people. I don't know if it'll be you, but I'm paying someone, something, like. $10 an hour or something. Just so you know, just kind of popped up in my, my thought process that I would get that started. But guess what? Here's the kicker. You want to get this money that daddy's ready to give you, Jill? Okay. Um, yeah, everybody's going to get some money for working on the show. Um, I'm going to pay you a little bit. It would be like minimum wage basically. But here's the thing in order to get anything at this point, you're going to have to sign another life controlling contract from the devil that I've written up for you, Jill. So just sign that and you'll get paid. Guess who didn't sign that contract? Jill and Derek. Jill and Derek. I bow down to them. 
I bow down to them. I'm sorry. If I was in that situation, I needed money. Oh, these two and their freaking conscience and their morals and their heartfelt attempt to do things the right way and the way that people just constantly criticize the crap out of them. These two. Why can't they just do what everybody else does? Take advantage of everything and everyone. That's what they should be doing because people criticize them anyway. The point that I'm trying to make is like, oh, Jill and Derek, you're the best. You're the best. That's what comes out of this documentary for me. <laughs> you know what? They didn't get paid to be on this documentary either. Where's the money? Cha-ching, cha-ching for these two. Am I the only one that feels that way? TLC, give them their own show. A show like just a um, like four-parter or something so they don't have to commit for their lives, but TLC pays them. The, I'm, I'm about the money. The money needs to come from somewhere. These kids' lives have been effed over. <laughs> and the only thing that's going to make that better is some moolah to buy that jacuzzi tub for the backyard and send your kids to college and buy like a nice stable vehicle to ride in. That's my feeling about it. Okay, guys, this is going to be the end for me. End of episode three. This is what I think and feel about it. Someone save Derek and Jill. They've done the best they can for their lives and people need to be nicer to them. That's what I feel. That's what I think. Let me know what you think and feel in the comments below. We have one more quick episode to get through tomorrow. Thank you so much for being here. I love you guys, and I'll see you tomorrow when we head down another rabbit hole.